Hey kids, what if I told you there was a dope ass YouTube channel? A channel that solidified my enjoyment and appreciation of a certain sect of video games, the domain of man, children, and trans lesbians who are just a little too into demon chicks. The classic and back from the dead boomer shooter. Well, this video isn't about Mandalore gaming, so here he is, the resident shitbag, Civi11. Look, I felt like I owed it to myself to at least try and write like a Civi video for at least a paragraph. I mean, it's not every day you come across a channel and creator that rewrites the rules and guidelines that you thought concrete in this day on how one should make a video, all while being one of the biggest voices, critics, and hype man for the revival of the boomer shooter. It's not often when I feel I need to make a video essay talking about or discussing the work of a creator on YouTube. But when I do, you know they're a favorite of mine. Or they do interesting things with the format and genre they find themselves in, or something I think is important. But first, you may be asking, in this very old rhetorical device that not even this lampshade is helping, is a boomer shooter. And just why is this civvy man obsessed with them? Well, a boomer shooter is a vibe of first-person shooter. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not really a genre, specifically. And different people will give you different definitions of just what a boom shoot is. Some may define it as only the classic games that use these mechanics that are associated with the games. Most will add in contemporary titles that try and harken back to those titles, while some others may lump all FPS games that don't fall into the modern military vibe as such. That's why I don't really classify it the boom shoot as a genre itself. It's a vibe, and each person has a different vibe. Isn't that right, Goatman? The even furries debate to the boom shoot. So I will get off this intellectual dick writing and just say what I think they are. Boomer shooters, boom shoots, retro FPS, all I think describe this force of gaming. In the boom and shoot, you have several maps which you explore, to get to the end but also to get extra goodies. While exploring, you have an arsenal of varied weapons to deal with the many enemies you will find, with each enemy having a different tactic to deal with. Now, this is not an all-or-nothing thing. These maps can be more arena, abstract, or based on real architecture. Boom shoots are great games, with the classics of Doom, Duke Nukem, or newer ones like A Medieval, Dusk, and whatnot. And those newer ones aren't stopping, whether it is re-releases of amazing classic games or brand new ones from dedicated fans. It is a rising and thriving fan community. However, this doesn't spring out of nowhere. Minor history. In the 2000s, FPS games focused on the tactical and semi-arcade tactical style of gameplay. You know, your Call of Duties, your Borderlands, things of that nature. Well, some madmen decided they wanted to make a brand new Rise of the Triad. This was the seed that would bring forth a mighty fuck-ton of games. One of the main people working on the Rot reboot was Dave Oshry, who then went on to be one of the founders of New Blood Interactive, with one of the first games they published being Dusk, a modern classic that revels in the beats of older FPS games. All the while, in the AAA sphere, you have a new Doom game on the horizon. So with the 1, 2, 3 of a flawed but interesting revival, a triple-A interpretation of a classic, and a new gem seemingly plucked out of time, you have a powder keg of inspiration. Dozens of games, you could probably even say hundreds, have come out of this reappreciation of older gameplay mechanics. Different games take inspiration from some specific, some aim to reach specific vibes, or add something new to the sausage. So many games are being shown off, talked about, released and forgotten that yeah several of these smaller publishers would team up and make a nintendo direct like presentation of new games but some reviewers and fans really got the word out for these games there are several great and amazing people who talk about them but like i said earlier we gotta talk about the shit bag i don't know when i first started watching civvy but I'm pretty sure it was in that time when a lot of us were just trying to find something new to watch. 
Now, I will be honest, I had only a passing interest in FPS games before then. I had gotten into the original Doom, fascinated by the creativity of the Doom modding community, so much so that I eventually forced my friends to play Doom in several mods, which you can hear in an Analytical Fanboys podcast here. Card in the corner. Uh, intent. Wink, wink. Uh, click it, please. I was most likely looking up gameplay of some Doom mods. Lo and behold, the algorithmic slop decided to show me a Civvy video, and I was hooked. Civvy, or Civvy 11, is... It a video essayist? A reviewer? A critic. Okay, none of those quite feel right. What Civvy makes is videos about the games he has an interest in, with his love of the FPS genre shining through. In these videos, in a conversational style, he goes over the details of gameplay, design, art direction, the making of. Really, it feels like some dude just telling you about this great game or this absolute pile of shit he was playing recently. And it works for him. His look on these subjects is fun and approachable. Approachable is a key word here. You know how some video makers can get. Hell, even this video, it is clear that I like to be verbose in my vocabulary. We're also trying to write sentences in varied ways. And this can get a little highfalutin. Not to say highfalutin is not a vibe into itself. We need people to dissect the minutia of a film or to wax poetic on a game. In the parlance of another person, sometimes you need to get floppy with it. But sometimes you just need a guy to cut through the bullshit. Emotion and thoughts raw, and given the nature of the games, games that feed into the id, build on a primal, unreal at the source, raw, untempered thought, is value. See, look at that right there. That was some verbal ass wankery. Sure, it can be evocative, but to say it's fucking shit while Beetlejuice honks his junk is immediate, unfiltered, and comprehensive. I will admit, getting into the weeds here, but follow me. Civvy has three major running gags. It's raw, nice fucking model, and the sewer count. Now I'm not about to sit here and say there's some deeper meaning to them. On the contrary, the opposite. These jokes are something to point out the obvious. It's raw. The game is not running the way it seems to be intended. Nice fucking model. The in-game materials are lacking polish and thus look off. And the sewer count, a dead running gag for a tire trope and level design. Point it out, move on. Gotta keep moving. Too much shit to talk about. Hit it with a blast. One shot, it's done. They are his proverbial shotgun. Some quick and effective shorthand that get the entirety of the point because the point is almost elemental. Like the pain you feel when you put your hand in the fire. And that is his writing to a T. When talking about more nuanced subjects, he does let them breathe. The history of development or the people behind the scenes of these games always seems to get the time of day. But the game, he hits those like he plays them, either enjoying it or gunning it down with the arsenal of his words at a breakneck speed. That speed is not only reserved for the analysis of the game, it also plays into his storytelling. Yes, storylines. When you hear storylines in a web series, the first thought may be something not flattering or real low thought and budget. Something aiming for the stars when all they got is a lint in their apartment. Divi, however, skirts this idea. The storylines are high concept and ridiculous, but the limits of presentation create the view of something larger without having to show it. Like in Jaws, when they knew the shark would not do well just plastered in the scene, so they hid it. And the same way the events are hidden, too ridiculous to be shown in full, we only get snippets. The evasions of demons here, a plot to bomb something there, just enough to see something going on, but not enough to bog down the rest of the video. And on first pass, these storylines could just be there as a creative exercise. Sometimes people just want to create for the sake of creating it. Nothing wrong with that. But of course, I think there's something more at play. In this series, the framing device is that Civ 11 is actually DV11, a prisoner number. The man we know as Civi is being held without trial in an underground prison guarded by robots that used to be part of his brain, 
Why is he there? We don't know. Does he deserve to be there? Again, unsure. I mean, he does act like a dickhead sometimes, but does that really mean he deserves this? But this element of lore, of world building, shows something. That Sivy is a prisoner of his own design. The robots that keep him locked up, seemingly takes of MST3K sidekicks, are derived from him. All the torment he suffers is through his own interest, being stuffed into him. He loves boomer shooters, so the prison will just keep stuffing them down his face. No matter what happens, another game will be played and another video must be made. All at the behest of a prison holding him, with him unsure as to even why he's being held. This framing is malleable. It can fit the vibe and need of the videos he's making. Is the prison reflective of his choices to talk about these games incessantly, at the cost of losing interest in them while still having to talk about them? Or is the story about the real world and its effect on people? There's even the idea that the whole thing could be a metaphor for making things as a creator feels like. Something unseen dictating the things you make, and while you enjoy aspects of it, the consistent need to grind on that next thing wears you down. The storylines and world building do a lot for the atmosphere of the video. It creates a feeling of dread in some places while giving the feeling of cruel absurdity in others. It is darkly comical just how much Sivy is punished in the goings on. He is not in control. He is not in control. Whether that is because of the world, the games, or his own doings, one must imagine Sivy miserable. And in the greater sphere of web video, it kind of proves some naysayers wrong. For a while, these sorts of videos were not looked on kindly. The Lo-Fi Story addition to the non-fiction video. People mocking the likes of the ABGN, the Nostalgia Critic, and Linkara, which always rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, it's cheesy and low rent. <coughs> yeah, it's cheesy and low rent but it was a somewhat earnest attempt at just being creative. And it seems to me this form of expression was mocked due to the fact that they had low resources, aimed too high, or, sure, got up their own ass. But it always felt a little shitty just dogging on that. There is a growing sentiment of creating art for art's own sake, and we can understand that when it comes to visual or music, but filmmaking is where we draw the line. No, with guys like Sivvy or others like Got the Wise or Cat Icarus, I'm glad they are pushing forward with these creative ideas, no matter how they are able to accomplish it. The internet just feels more alive if people are allowed to be weird and tell odd stories. But all these skits and gags are in the service of the games Civi talks about. In a certain way, his jokes and storylines fit with the boomer shooters he talks about. Over the top, cheesy, an often in-your-face attitude that gets you in the mood. It's like going into a schlocky horror movie when you know it's total schlock. The comedy can act as reverence to a classic in one video to abject mockery of a broken, janky mess the next. It becomes the soft pillow for the display that Civi puts on. But his general critique is also interesting, often letting the game speak for itself, for good or ill. All the glitches, the bugs, or all the surprise he has at the quality. Now, there are several games he has criticized that are known quantities, but the unknown, that's where the magic lies. Divi will present the game in question, some presumed Euro jank, and something will catch the eye. An idea, detail, thought put in that you wouldn't think. The awe in his voice when he finds these gems is palpable. But when they stink, they reek, but he never just leaves it as this bad. Often he explains the shortcut that they have taken, or else he just revels in the just pure, poor execution of the idea. Whether it is a slightly jank model, all the way to bad math and trash design. This is not done in some grand idea up in port. This feels more of the kind of a man cataloging. Making notes for the Museum of Boomer Shooters, putting the context of the game next to it to more properly understand. This is not Moses coming from on high to declare what the true peak of the FPS genre is. Sivy is more historian. Take for example his video on Chasm, 
It starts with him simply being impressed and bemused by the details that the devs were able to put into the game. The cheap but impressive cutscene. The solid detail work such as the moths and the light. But as he continues into the game, he realizes the nature of the game is all the more impressive. As he goes into detail just what the artists were able to accomplish with their limitation, he lines up the timelines with other games just to show you what it was going up against. The display of the game is also important. You know the phrase, those that do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Well, Civi is doing his damnedest to make sure people learn. Whether poor design or horrid management, he wants to show what these games could have been or what was lost by the closing of a studio. But on the same token, there's an effort to showcase the new crop of games that are coming out that carry the torch of the older classics he loved. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. He will point out when these new titles are derivative or a little sloppy, but the other side of that coin, he will commend passion and new ideas. But this care if he has for the genre makes him an excellent voice for this crop of independent developers who want to make this specific type of game. I admire Civi 11. He was able to take his love of a very specific genre of video game and create something wonderful out of it. Taking the time to make storylines, some of the greatest shit posts, all while being a voice to this weird little subset of game development. It is creative endeavors like this that I wish the world was filled with. But the world is filled with them. Civi shows off games that have had years of development or loads of heart put into them, where they are able to accomplish everything they wanted and maybe more. With every game, he shows that, and looking at them being beautiful and brilliant. But even then, some of those games, as broken as they are, do have heart and soul put into them. Blood 2 is a mess, but he wanted to show that it wasn't broken because no one cared. It, but because of the machinations of video game publishers. Dai Katana is Dai Katana. What Civi still showed was that John Romero cared about the project and probably just got a little in over his head. But he's also shown the amount of community behind these games and showed me games I probably wouldn't have given a second look at. And that's valuable. That's good. It's nice to see in the world, and I hope we all take that little element of love and appreciation and care to everything we love and appreciate and care about. All this for a man who has a cameo in his favorite franchise, where you can kill him and piss on him. Oh, after you buy crack from him. Hashtag free city. Big thank you to my patrons, my supporters, Esconde and Scott Firestein.